Willkommen zurück zu Zodiac Trial. Die zweite vielleicht, denn wir sind erneut in einer Schule gefangen. Yay! Im letzten Part haben wir nämlich ein wenig die, 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 den Fall von Ryan's Dad analysiert. Und wir kamen zum Schluss, dass irgendwas faul sein könnte. Doc hat eine Idee, aber da wurde er erschossen von einer mysteriösen Person. Der Tipp war nämlich von Doc, als er starb, 3. Vor dem Mund gehaltene 3. Was das heißt, weiß ich nicht. Äh, vielleicht Buchstaben, vielleicht äh, hier Silben im Namen. Die Nummer 3, wer weiß es schon. Und danach wurden wir entführt, genau wie alle anderen auch. Das heißt, wir sind alle wieder zurück. Yay. Und nun folgen wir den Fallen. Oh nein. Naja, was soll man tun? Resigned to our fate, we followed the arrows. They took us down a long, straight, winding hallway that passed by a number of classrooms. Eventually, we took a right turn and then two left turns up a short staircase that brought us to a second floor. Moving right forwards, from there, the arrows led into a library. And in the library were nine familiar faces. Mouse, arts! Ah, there you two are! I was wondering when you join us. So, we are really well back for back. We are expecting something else? God, that's fucking blood. Anyways, I guess it's nice to say that you haven't died yet, Mouse. What about you? You can go fuck off and die anytime you want, you classic prick. Okay then. <laughs> okay then. This feels oddly familiar. I don't mean that is a good thing. It's almost like all the work we did to not die the first time was for nothing. Almost. Oh, all of us were brought back. Except for Doc, which uh, <laughs> makes sense. Actually, uh, he looks sick. Was brought here, just not. I uh, didn't need to fi uh, finish a sentence. Christ, that's messed up. What's the point of transporting a corpse like that? To keep things truly automatic, I suppose. I guess. In the back of the room, Rooster was leaning against the wall, looking furious. Well, it was an understandable reaction, but compared to how he took things seemingly in, in strides last time... Are you okay there, Rooster? Okay? Do I look okay to you? Fuck! Things were finally going right again, and then this bullshit started up again! The hell is this? The time before was one thing, but now that my star was finally starting to rise? Hey, hey, calm down. We got through things before, right? We can do it again! Seriously, Mouse? You told me to face reality last time, I think. Well... He wasn't facing reality now. We got through things last time by a fluke. We ran a loophole we were lucky enough to catch early on. You really think things will go smoothly like this like that? You really think things will go that smoothly this time? <clears throat> That's um before I could say anything else, a video played over the speakers. Attention bidders. Please be silent. A very important announcement is about to begin. Anyone who disturbs said announcement shall be punished. Just like that, a projector stacked on the bookshelf turned on and began to project a bizarre video on the whiteboard. Last time we were greeted with the life feet of Brian in a mask and hoodie. This time, however, we were shown an image of what looked like a cat burning in hell, drawn in a very cute, crude art style. Gothic horror wouldn't be the term to describe the style. Snake would be better suited to describe it than me. Hello, dear friends. <clears throat> Glad to see you all back together again. I'm sure you missed each other. And I'm sure you missed the thrill of the race. I thought you punched him a few. You did catch him up. Meow. I know you previously met with the Jade Emperor. Meow. He put you all on trial and you passed this gauntlet fine enough. Meow. But then, are you all free to join the world? I think not. I think he was too kind on my fellow sinners. And so it falls on me, the cat, to truly put you all to the test. I'm sure you're... Suddenly, Monkey spoke out. Okay, that's enough. I can't do this whole thing again. Who's ever behind us? Stop hiding behind this mask. I'm sure with an earnest discussion, we could figure some out... Oh! All of a sudden, Monkey wins in pain, clutching her stomach. That, my friend, is what you call a warning. The next person to interrupt my explanation will be silenced in a much more permanent matter. We all got the point. Very well, then. I understand that you all have been enough through and a similar experience before. No need to slow things down going through all the goody details. 
You all already know that the devices trapped around your stomach cannot be removed. You all already know that it can be used to execute any of you at will. You, you all already know that exiting the building before the game has finished will result in execution. Let's just get to the juicy bits, shall we? That is to say, the rules of the game you all will be facing off in. The rules of the Zodiac bit. The screen, oh, the screen changed to an image of a wheel with the zodiac animals all wrapped around it. First things first, I want to explain how scoring will work in this game. It's a little complicated and it's absolutely critical for understanding how to play, so we'll start with this. Throughout the game, you may be able to collect animal cards. The thing about these cards, though, is that their point value is dependent on who has them. Let me explain through example. Let the mouse collects a mouse card. To her, it will be worth 3 points. Say she also collects an ox card and a pig card. Since each of these animals is one space away from her, the wheel, these cards will be worth 2 points each. Following this pattern to her, the tiger and the dog cards will be worth 1 point. The bunny and the monkey will be worth nothing. The dragon and the rooster will be worth negative 1 point. The snake and the sheep will be worth negative 2 points. And the horse will be worth a full negative 3 points. However, as I said, the points awarded to a card is based on distance on the zodiac wheel from the owner. So, if Ox or Pig got their hands on the mouse card, it would be worth 2 points. If the horse got their hands on the mouse card, it would be worth negative 3 points. Simple as not. If you understand these basic rules, then you already understand half the game. This game will take place over the course of 12 rounds. There are a total of 48 cards, 4 cards of every animal. The first two rounds, nine cards will be dealt on the common ta communal table. The next three rounds, six cards will be dealt. The next four rounds, three cards will be dealt. The final rounds will commence without any cards being dealt. Every round will last 30 minutes. At the end of the round, the cards present on the commune table, table will be displayed on everybody's computer. Then, for the next 30 seconds, everyone will be forced to take an action. Failure to take an action in a round will result in an execution. Operating a computer that doesn't correspond to your animal will result in an execution. There are a total of four actions you can take during a round. You can attempt to take any card currently on the communal table. If you are the only person to take the card, congratulations, it is transferred to your hand. However, if multiple people attempt to take the same card, it will be ripped in the struggle and nobody will, will receive the card. If nobody attempts to take the card, the card will remain on the community table until somebody attempts to take it. If you have taken cards, if you have cards in your hand, you can choose to set a card on the community table. If you do this, the card will appear on the community table in the future rounds until it is taken. Alternatively, you could just directly give a card to a fellow player. That will transfer the card directly from your hand to theirs. Finally, if all this card transferring business is too much for you, you could always choose to check another player. If you do this, you'll learn how many cards a person has in their hand. That's not the only way of getting info. At the end of even numbered rounds, the current point total of every player will be projected in his room. Anyway, the game continues until someone can amass a hand worth 9 points. At that time, the animal with the winning part hand will be considered the dominant animal. Then will check who has the dominant animal cards in the hand. Whoever has the most dominant animal cards in the hand will be proclaimed the winner. In the case of a tie, there can be multiple winners. The winners will be able to leave this building peacefully. On the other hand, all non-winners will be faced with execution. How exciting! So that's that, basically. The rules are pretty simple, don't you think? Anyways, the first round will begin shortly. Oh, I suppose there are two more things I should mention. Firstly, if all trade rounds pass without somebody assembling a 9 point hand, I just have to declare the game null and void. In that case, I'll just execute everybody. Secondly, it'd be mean if people got caught off guard by the action phase of the round starting. To help with that, a warning will play through the school two minutes before the action phase begins. Okay then, ready to have some fun? Show me a game that's a little less predictable, why don't we, why don't ya? And just like that, the projection shut down. Well, that was, um, something. Okay, temper check real quick. I'm not saying that the Zodiac race was all the better or anything. 
but it at least it's kind of had the air of some sort of final judgment thing. This just feels like we're on a bad game show, right? I mean, am I, am I imagining this? It's just me? Because I feel like it's incredible how much less authentic it feels. Yeah, uh, I kind of get what you're saying. This seems different somehow. I remain unsure if this game is more authentic or less than the one we have faced before. However, whatever the case may be, the truth remains unaltered. We shall have to face this game down head on. Hey, but can we do this really easily, right? I mean, even I get what we need to do, and I'm not even all that smart. The cat said if there's a tie in the terms of who has the most dominant animal cards, everybody can win. Which means, so long as nobody takes the winner's card, we can all get out alive, right? <coughs> oh god, my heart. However, the winner's card will be the easiest way for win for winner to get to the nine points, no? This is not an issue to consider. There's still a card worth two points and one points for the winner. Someone can get a total of 24 points without getting a single card of their own. However, things aren't just going to end here, are they? Huh? Oh, is this right? Last time, the Jade Emperor added a new rule later on which made me an Ox a traitor. They're probably going to do something like that again. But unlike last time, it doesn't sound like there are any items or anything that will let us fix that. Are, are we really going to be alright? Okay, everybody, listen up. We really don't have time to lose on the typical petty squabbling and banter which constitute much of our time in the last moronic death game we were all put into. The rule this time is harsher and the time limits are tighter. If the, if the cretin behind this game decides to later alter this game from a team effort to a lynching, well, there's not much we can do. Instead, we simply need to establish a fo and follow a, an optimal strategy. In this case, doing so is not a particularly difficult mission. First off, we need to choose somebody to be a designed winner, designated winner. For the sake of ease, let's just say the person will be Tiger. She's like our mascot, no? Then let's go with her. Hell yeah! Now, the cards that will score for Tiger, other than Tiger cards, are the Mouse Ox, Mouse Ox, Bunny and Dragon cards. Therefore, Mouse, myself, Bunny and Dragon will be responsible for picking up our own type of cards when it appears and gifting it to Tiger. For the sake of things, Pig and Snake can also pick up their own type of card and give it to Tiger, as those will be neutral to a score. As for everybody else, your job will be to simply not interfere, check somebody on round when there's nothing to do. On the other hand, if a tiger card shows up, everybody not assigned a task shall try and take it. That will inevitably result in the tiger card being ripped up. With this method, it's inevitable the tiger will eventually win without a single tiger card landing in somebody's hands. Well, I just second cut 12 that grow ire. Please don't do this. <laughs> we don't have time. Does anyone have any actionable objection with my plan? It seems a sensible enough strategy. I think it makes sense. I see no issue. Wait, then in that case, we've got a plan. Oh, okay then. Do whatever you want until the two minute warning. I like this spirit, it's not cool. And like that, people began to disperse. Class is missed. Frankly, I wasn't so confident everything would go nearly as clearly as Ox claimed it would. I was also still confused about so many points. There were a lot of mysteries about, and I could feel myself on the cusp of solving at least a few of them. The key had to lie with an incident surrounding Amadeus Bowen's murder. To get to the bottom of it, I needed to inter interrogate more people. So it was just a matter of who to talk to. Who to talk to? Um... Sorry, hab kurz nicht lang gemacht, mein Zimmer. Ich würde gern reden mit. Gute Frage. Okay. Pig. Okay. Ich versuche gerade nämlich ähm, die Message von, Man von Dog zu erklären. Und er hat gesagt: Mund und drei Buchstaben. Oder drei Silben. Die Sache: keiner hat drei Silben, oder? Ox hat ein, Tiger hat zwei, Bunny hat zwei, Dragon hat zwei, Snake hat ein, Horse hat ein, Sheep hat ein, Rooster hat zwei, Monkey hat ein, Pick hat auch ein, aber Pick hat drei Buchstaben. Warum sage ich Pick? Pick was a journalist at the time. Not just that, she was perhaps the only totally unbiased perspective in all of this. Surely asking her about the incident could be useful. Ah, sorry, I don't know if I'm really going to be useful about all that. Shit. 
I thought you did reporting on that at the time. I did, but that was a while ago, and I do a lot of reporting about a lot of things on top of my other couple of jobs. The details are now are fuzzy, probably a lot fuzzier than yours are. I don't think I could be of any help at all, sorry. Uh, I get it. I just asked you about a case from the thin air, how it, be give you, how it will be difficult for you. But after all this happened and you got free, surely you go back and re-look at the case, right? I've been way too busy for that. After all, this new case is way more mysterious. Alright, is there anything to know about the Zodiac trial? Damn straight there is. There's a ton of weird details about this thing that don't make it like a lick of sense. Like, take roosters and sheep's kidnappings. The investigation surrounding it shows that they happened at different locations, parts apart, but they happened a couple minutes of, of minute within each other. I mean, the timeline rough and, and all, but with generous assumptions on all regards, it doesn't make any sense that a single teenager could handle everything. That is concerning. And that's not all! Did you know pretty much every aspect of the Zodiac race that wasn't automated, automated could be controlled via a custom app Brian created? Really? Yeah. And he installed that app on two separate burner phones. Why two? In fact, why put them on phones at all? He could also control it from the laptop that was found burned in his base. That is all strange. So, uh, yeah, maybe think twice before calling me useless. You were the one who called yourself useless. I've been busy looking into stuff like this. I don't know how useful I'm looking into this, though. <laughs> it's uh, super useful. And this, and this pig just looked at me blankly. It seemed like she didn't believe me. Then, after pause, Pig spoke in a quiet voice. But there's something useful I can do, I think. What are you talking about? Look, this whole game thing. It's an obvious sloppy job. Don't get me wrong, it's functional, you know it works. But there wasn't nearly the time and care put into this that was put into the Zodiac race. Looking at the computers, I could tell that the coding was done by an amateur. And so, I think I can take advantage of that. Take advantage? How would you do that? The program's running on the computers. They're happening on top of the computer's usual functions. I can tell that the programs were made using a very cookie cutter of applications. And that application has some exploits. It's possible I can get to screen behind the program. That is to say, access the actual computer. And with that, I could contact the authorities. I could get help. Or if that fails, I could look into the programming of these programs, see if I could uncover anything. I don't know exactly, I just know I can I can do something, and I feel obligated to do something. Big. Uh, einerseits, ich bin sicher, das können sie töten, weil es halt eindringlich in das Spiel ist. Warte. Okay, ich nehme erstmal das. Das ist uns awesome, Pig. Definitely try that next opportunity you get. Is this is a chance to turn things on the mastermind's head. A chance to strike back. Exactly. I'm glad you see it my way. Alright then. I go ahead with this plan. I don't want to be compl complacent anymore. No. I can't be passive anymore. This is my life, you know. And my life is on the line. I'm not going... I'm just going to roll over and die. That's for certain. With those are at least determined words, they walked away. Oh. Huh. It seemed to me that something had changed in Pig compared to the girl I met when I first woke up in this crabby high school. Good for her. Aww. Mmm. Sheep, vielleicht? Aber nee, warte, ich bin nicht so sheep. Ich bin zu... Ochs immer sehr wichtig gewesen. Ah. Ochs? Ochs prosecuted Mr. Morris. He should have a thorough of grasp of grasp the case. I decided to find him and talk to him about his perspective and all of this. How certain I am I that Aaron Morris is a culprit? Before all of this, I'd say 100%, but now, perhaps 95%. It's only 5% lower. Look, the possibility of a grand conspiracy is certainly present, I'll grant you. But I also oversaw a lot of the evidence and looked through it myself. According to your story, the chief of police might have been trying to give this case a decisive edge, but it's not like he didn't have good reason. He may have wanted to prevent the bit about a knife coming out, but it was also pretty clear who the killer had to be. 
None of the people involved had much of a connection before this, so the possibility of accomplice is minimal. A whole cavalcade of evidence points to Aaron Morris. It is impossible for anyone else to have done it. But that's the thing though. Isn't it kind of suspicious just how obvious Morris was? Wouldn't he have hidden it better? He couldn't have known he'd be found out so quickly. Okay, but there are still things he could have done better. Like, why send that delayed text to Snake? Doesn't it speed up the process of everybody realizing Bone was missing? The biggest mistake you're making out of this is taking Snake and Tiger's testimony for granted. A reasonable person with knowledge of the schedule would probably know to be wary of that you might be seen through the waiting rooms. However, you couldn't have expected that Snake would have been such a vigilant watcher and not just look on his phone or sit in a position that would give him a constant view of the room. Nobody could have. He couldn't have anticipated Rooster barging into the office like that. He couldn't have anticipated Bunny finding the body so quickly. Snake seeing nobody in the office would reinforce his dumb story about Bowen being out of the office when Moe entered. He would have written it off as Bowen having left the office at some point, probably when she went to get breakfast on the first floor as usual. Bowen going missing would be a lot broader. And he still had the stolen master cut, so he could have come back at a later date to dispose of the body, not just leave it in the safe like that. I guess when you put it like that, it makes more sense. Pace of mouse. We got the right man the first time. We had the motive. He had the one who could. He was the one who, who could have stolen all the money out of the safe. He had the bills found in his car. He did it. And if you did get the wrong man, if you had the hand in the execution of an innocent person. Would you be able to admit it? What are you talking about? Of course I admit it. Why wouldn't I? You couldn't, could you? It, it, it would weigh too heavily on your conscience. After persecuting so many people, locking so many criminals away, you must have learned to shield your heart from doubt. Are you trying to start a fight? Not all, Ox. I just think it's a little sad. Wow! <laughs> With everything settled, I left Ox to himself. Jesus! Mouse! Monkey was to Brian's therapist. Surely him put on this world be insightful? I went to ask her about that. It's something of a breach of patient client, confidential, but at this point, I suppose that's a bit of a moot point. Anyways, I don't think you'll get much out of me. I tried to approach Brian on his own terms, but that appeared, appeared to have backfired somewhat. I should have stumped out these delusions at the root. You entertain these delusions? I let him talk out his ideas. It's often a useful tool to help people come to their sense on their own. But for some reason, my guidance wasn't working. It was like it was somehow getting worse with every session. Worse? And it's more than just that. It was a tough. It was a thought. No, it was a tough. No. So, it was as though his theories, his illusions about what happened with his father and our corrupt decision and the system in society was, they become more elaborate. No, elaborate is not the right word. Detailed. It was as though he was becoming more and more knowledgeable on the topic. And as he was becoming more knowledgeable, he was becoming more convinced in his world worldview. Monkey sighed. At some point, I definitely should have shifted tactics. I knew I was dealing with a larger scale sort of case. But I thought that just meant I had to take my time with him. No, not that it would lead to this. Anyways, I don't know if any of that was helpful to you. Oh, I think it was. Get to here. Well, I'm gonna keep investigating things on my end. You do that. But Mouse... No, Mary? My heart stopped for a second. It had been a while since somebody had referred to me by my real name. Yes? Please, don't overextend yourself. I know all of this is doing a number on you. I just don't want you to break. <laughs> yeah, well, I get the feeling I'll need a lot more sessions after this. Indeed. Perhaps you should try hypnotherapy again. Oh god, please no. Three long and boring sessions were ever enough for me, thank you. What can I say? I was very curious if it would work. Well, you got your answer. That I did. I smiled. It was nice, though, through all the chaos and tragedy, that I at least had Monkey to fall back on. Mouse? In all seriousness, are you doing okay? Uh, 
I don't know how I'm holding up. Oh, oh, oh. What an emotionally matched response. I'm impressed with your growth. My growth? The old you would never have given such a measured response. Certainly not in a situation like this. Oh, well, thank you, thank you, I guess. You're welcome, I guess. On a slightly awkward note, our conversation ended. And I left the classroom with an inter interesting fact under my belt. Ernsthaft, ich will mit ihm mal reden. Oh, okay. Das machen wir im nächsten Part aber erst. Oh boy, das sind viele Gelabersachen anscheinend. Subi, subi, subi. Yay. Gut. Wir sehen uns beim nächsten Mal, wenn es heißt, willkommen bei Zodiac Trial. Ah, nein, 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 nein. Jetzt ist ja das Zodiac Bit. Von daher. Buh, billige Nachmache. <lacht> Tschüss.